I want to talk now to trial lawyer Robert Barnes, one of the great experts on many of these legal travesties that have been happening here. Uh, Robert, give us just sort of the update on the very latest in what's happening with this hush money trial in New York. Well, a sham of a trial is now reaching its uh, Soviet-style show trial portion of the case. Uh, we're having jurors being seated in the case who have open, overt hostilities to President Trump. The Constitution of the State of New York and the Constitution of the United States guarantees your right as an individual defendant in any criminal case to an impartial jury, just like it entitles you to an impartial, neutral judge. Yet here we have a judge whose family is involved in politics on behalf of the uh, Trump's leading opponent, President Biden. Uh, we have the jury pool announcing their commitment. Some of them have said they have social media posts bashing and attacking President Trump. Interviews with several prospective jurors taken outside the courtroom showed extraordinary bias and prejudice against President Trump. The judge refuses to disqualify himself. He's now seated a partial prejudice jury. And Trump himself is still gagged. You have independent lawyers, a guy by the name of Good, uh, Good Logic is the name of his uh, website, has filed a challenge with the New York Court of Appeals about the illegal gag order on President Trump. Uh, so it is a disgrace of a case that continues to showcase what's wrong with the American legal system right now. Well, I mean, and it's not just really, Robert, the American legal system so much as, as it is the New York legal system here, because we have spoken about this and other cases in New York. Um, but tell me about the jury selection in particular. My understanding is that the judge would look at some of these social media posts from people slamming Trump and saying, ah, oh, it's a close call. I'll let this person sit on the jury. That's precisely the right. People that have called President Trump racist, sexist, called him names, attacked him personally, those people were considered close calls. Maybe that, that that's good enough to sit on a juror and be an impartial jury concerning President Trump. Uh, it, it's a disgrace. Uh, these are, he has sat jurors that later on he tried to sit, seat some juries, jurors who later on admitted that they were hopelessly biased against President Trump. And only upon their own confession were they removed from the jury pool. So they what, picked the, one of the most contaminated jury pools in the country for partisan prejudice to try President Trump. Well, I mean, you know, Robert, we know that New York went, I think, 90, 95 percent for, uh, for Biden anyway and for Hillary anyway. But, I mean, just in terms of that jury, too, was there a danger that activists who might be, you know, really committed to nailing Trump to the wall here, that some of them might have slipped through? Well, apparently, members of Democratic congressional staff who were part of impeaching President Trump, were, uh, who had family members and friends on that congressional staff, were trying to get their way on the jury. And it only came out because some media members accidentally outed them. They even tried to delete their tweets later on that exposed it. So that's the degree to which it's like the D.C. trials. Martin Luther King in 1950s Birmingham with an all-white jury could get a more impartial jury than President Trump can get in the city of New York and in Manhattan with this judge presiding. Yeah, and I mean, this judge seems to absolutely have it in for Trump. I mean, among other things, he's acting like, well, you know, he can't go to his kid's graduation. Donald Trump will not be allowed to go to his son Barron's high school graduation, which seems very churlish. But even more than that, on a legal basis, he's also saying that Trump can't be there for arguments in the Supreme Court uh, in another one of his matters, essentially saying that this New York court is above the Supreme Court. This is real banana republic territory, isn't it, Robert? Completely. It's interference with his ability to exercise his First Amendment rights in terms of campaigning, his fir First Amendment rights to petition the government, his First Amendment rights to be present in the Supreme Court when his oral argument is held, his right to be in court in either Georgia or the Florida federal case when argument, substantive argument is being heard there. So it's continued constant, and that's not even to deal with his speech infringement that's taking place with this unconstitutional gag order where witnesses are allowed to go out and lie about him on national TV, and he's not allowed to defend himself right in the middle of a campaign. This is extraordinary unconstitutional conduct by a judge who has long since lost the script of what the Constitution compels of him. Well, it's not just this, this judge. There's also um, Judge Ergeron with the other New York matter. And I'm hearing that he, Trump's bond might be rejected in that case on a technicality. Are we going to start seeing potentially Trump assets again, once again, under the threat of seizure? And, and Robert, I mean, 
you know, what does this say to people doing business in New York that if they get involved in politics, they could wind up being on the really the wrong end of a judge with a grudge? Completely. You have to get out of New York, unfortunately. It's what I advised clients about a decade ago about California, that the court systems were becoming compromised by political and partisan prejudice. And then if you became targeted by some rogue prosecutor, you could not rely or depend upon the New York judiciary to come to your defense, even where your own constitutional liberties were being violated and infringed. And here you have the former president of the United States, the leading candidate to be the next president of the United States, one of the most successful businessmen in the history of the city and state of New York being prosecuted to such a degree that they're denying him rights of speech, they're denying him rights to impartial trials, they're denying him rights of immediate appeal on immunity issues, and now they're even trying to deny him the right for bail pending appeal and bond pending appeal in the case of the civil case, and uh, using every trick in the book to do it. They want to bankrupt him, they want to jail him, they want to destroy him politically and electorally and legally, and they're doing so in a manner that makes a joke of the New York justice system. Robert Brothers, we're going to have to leave it right there, but I think that a joke is the only thing that we can describe it. We'll come back to you in a coming week to hear more about all of these Trump legal matters.